For over a century, students have been coming to Oshkosh seeking knowledge. And for over a century, the University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh has been serving their needs. George S. Alvey, first president of Oshkosh Normal School, once said, a normal school must be in a state of perpetual evolution. In a recent conversation, Roger Giles, the current chancellor of the university, echoed this theme. Uh, the ability to live with change, the ability to control change, the ability to uh, somehow or other uh, take change in stride rather than regard it as a disadvantage is one of the great challenges that we face. This continuity of philosophy is only one of the distinguishing characteristics of the university as we know it today. Equally distinguishing is the flexibility with which the university has evolved and adapted itself to the needs of the times, working always within a framework of sound educational theory. The freshness of its modern, well-equipped physical plant tends to obscure the rich history of the institution and the vital role it has played in the development of higher education in the state. But behind the shiny laboratories and the impressive new classroom buildings is a mature institution building on the foundation of its past and eagerly facing the future. On September 19, 1871, the Oshkosh Normal School was dedicated. The purpose of the institution was the instruction and training of persons, both male and female, in the theory and art of teaching and in all the various branches that pertain to a good common school education. For the next 80 years, the school would dedicate itself solely to this purpose. Midway through this period, on the evening of March 22nd, 1916, fire broke out. The disastrous fire which gutted the original building that winter night marked a major turning point in the history of the institution. Oshkosh Normal School would never be the same. What followed was a period of rebuilding, of growth and expansion. Units planned for construction before the fire began to appear. Science and administration areas, a library room, an auditorium. Student enrollment rose and fell with the coming and passing of World War I and the Depression. These were the years of Miss Rose Swart and Regent Edward Dempsey, of Presidents Keith and Brown. Forrest Polk became president and World War II came and went. And once again, it was time for growth. A major program of expansion was formulated in the 50s under Chancellor Roger Giles, and construction hit a peak in the late 60s. This was the most dramatic period in terms of both increased student enrollment and expansion of facilities. Dormitories were needed for the expanding student population. These were built. A library was built, a planetarium, science center, social science center, arts and communication center. The library was expanded, the union was expanded, the university was growing. The changes in the face of the university reflected internal expansion as well. In his inaugural address in 1959, Chancellor Giles had set the tone and direction the university would take, the goal of educating everyone to the maximum level that his ability permits. This meant expanded curriculum. In 1962, a graduate school was added. In 1965, a school of business administration, and in 1966, a school of nursing. 
Today, we find an institution occupying 180 acres and serving over 11,500 students. The faculty has grown from six in 1871 to over 750 today, with an additional staff of more than 365. The pattern of growth which the university has undergone has produced some unique advantages. Paramount among these is the fact that the current faculty has had a hand in the design of the facilities in which they now work. Because of their modern design and the recency of their construction, all these buildings reflect the thinking of faculty members who have been consciously aware of what a university facility ought to be. A brief tour of the campus will reveal the extent to which this growth has transformed Oshkosh into a major educational institution. The School of Letters and Science is the largest school within the university in terms of student enrollment. In addition to serving the needs of its majors and minors, the School of Letters and Science provides a general education program for all undergraduates, offering supplemental courses to round out the education of those concentrating in other areas of specialization. It's not unusual to find a business or education major seated in the Buckstaff Planetarium, gazing at Venus ascending, or in one of the chemistry labs, gingerly adding silver nitrate to sodium chloride. Among the new facilities which serve the needs of the liberal arts student is the Halsey Science Center, named for Rufus Halsey, who served as president from 1899 to 1907. The center houses offices, classrooms, and laboratories for the physics, chemistry, biology, and geography departments. Within the center, the student of the physical sciences will find laboratories and equipment designed to accommodate inquiry into matter from the atom to the universe. It is believed that this blend of areas of academic concentration produces a well-rounded student, a student better prepared to face the complexities of the world outside the classroom. Dedicated in 1971, the Arts and Communication Center houses the art, speech, and music departments, including major facilities such as the Music Hall and the Frederick March Theater. Located on the fourth floor of the complex are the studios and control rooms of the university radio station, WRST-FM, operated and programmed entirely by students. The station serves as a practical laboratory for classes in broadcasting, news, announcing, and station management. Here, students are able to apply the theories of the classroom in an on-the-job situation by preparing news, entertainment, and community affairs programs and carrying these through all the production stages to actual broadcast. The art department occupies two floors of the eastern wing and provides the serious student with an enviable array of equipment and work areas. Aside from the academic areas of art history and education, instruction is also provided in photography, art metal, ceramics, graphics, sculpture, weaving, the list goes on and on. Across the mall in the west wing are the television and drama facilities, which include fully equipped black and white and color television studios, an experimental theater, and the 500-seat Frederick March Theater plus rehearsal rooms and a scenery shop. The facilities of the music department, also located in the complex, range from individual practice rooms to a 500-seat music hall. Students in the music department have a wide variety of choices in the area of performance groups. For vocal students, there are the men's and women's choruses, the university choir, and the chamber choir. For instrumental students, there is the wind ensemble, the jazz lab ensemble, the titan band and the regimental band, the percussion ensemble, and the university symphony. With each group giving one concert per semester, there is ample opportunity for students and faculty who appreciate good music to enjoy a rich diet of live performances throughout the year. Students wishing to concentrate in non-performance areas are equally well taken care of, with the department offering courses in music education, therapy, history, literature, and theory. 
And finally, the department offers private lessons for its majors and minors. Oshkosh Normal School was founded as a teacher training institution, and in the last hundred years, it has graduated or certified over 20,000 primary and secondary teachers. The School of Education is presently housed in a new facility, equipped with all the latest in modern technology. Closed circuit television, observation classrooms, and a wide variety of audiovisual equipment. The seven story structure accommodates over 4,000 undergraduates and 750 graduate students, offering an impressive array of specialized services. These include the television studio, the university audiovisual lab, and the statistics lab, to mention only a few. Two central elements to the design of the structure are flexibility and research. Large classrooms are available for lecture courses, and at the same time, these can be easily divided into smaller work areas by the use of soundproof accordion walls. The research center is equipped with wall-mounted remote control television cameras. The center can accommodate groups of from 15 to 150. The School of Education offers degrees in upper and lower elementary education, secondary education, and special education. The special education category is for those students who are interested in working with gifted, mentally retarded, or emotionally disturbed children. The most direct link the school has with the past is the laboratory school, opened in 1928 and named for faculty member Rose C. Swart, who served with only a short break from 1871 to 1922. The facility was first used as a campus school, a training ground for student teachers in the education department. In addition to being a fine primary school, its classrooms gave countless hours of the practical experience essential to the development of fine teachers. More recently, it has evolved into a laboratory school, incorporating experimental and progressive theories of both curriculum development and teaching methodology. The School of Nursing, which adjoins the School of Education, is a recent addition to the academic program at Oshkosh. Inaugurated in 1966, the school trains students in the latest methods of patient care with approximately half of the curriculum devoted to clinical nursing courses. The program in nursing covers four years and one summer session, with the first two years encompassing general liberal arts requirements and the remainder of the time devoted to the professional sequence. In addition to developing the abilities essential to general nursing responsibilities, the nursing program attempts to lay the foundation for graduate education for those students interested in teaching supervision administration, and research. With offices in the Clough Faculty Building, the School of Business Administration is charged with the responsibility of providing the student with the kind of thorough and varied background required in today's business world. This is achieved through a program of pre-business courses augmenting the general undergraduate curriculum. When these courses are completed, the student is then admitted to the School of Business. Once officially admitted, the student chooses an area of specialization with which to complete the degree requirements. Available majors include accounting, operations management, manpower management and administration management, finance, and marketing. As a part of their courses of study, all business majors are required to work with the University Computer Center to gain a more complete understanding of the ways in which computer technology can be applied to the decision-making process in management. Students find this practical instruction an invaluable element in their total preparation. Not every older building on campus was removed or replaced during the recent expansion. Many were remodeled and put to new uses. A good example of this is Harrington Hall, which was built in 1912. In the past, the building had been used primarily as a manual arts training center, with classes in everything from blacksmithing to auto mechanics. It now houses the classrooms, offices, and laboratories for the geology department. One of the main features of the building is the physical processes laboratory, or as it's more commonly called, the fancy gadget room. 
The room contains a number of devices, including a wave tank, used both in teaching and research. The wave tank and other machines are able to simulate or duplicate the creation of beaches and deltas and vividly demonstrate the effects of erosion on different types of soil. The Forrest R. Polk Library is the intellectual center of the university and incorporates in its design a flexibility necessary to take advantage of forthcoming library science technology. Dedicated in November 1962, the facility contains over 400,000 volumes, upwards of 10,000 microfilms, and over 200,000 microtext materials. One of the outstanding features of the library is the Education Materials Center, which contains films, recordings, curriculum materials, and other resources essential to a thriving university community. The heart of the library is the stacks, and Polk Library maintains an open stack system by subject division, bordered by individual study areas. To augment its resources, Polk Library belongs to an interlibrary loan service, whereby materials may be borrowed from other libraries for the cost of the postage. In addition to this, there is also an arrangement with other state university libraries to exchange Xeroxed periodical material at no cost. Farther along the mall is the Reed Memorial Union, which serves as the social center of the campus. Here, the recreational needs of the students are met with facilities such as the Titan Room snack bar, more formal dining areas, and meeting rooms. For students so inclined, billiards, table tennis, bowling, and cards are also available. Student input is essential to the operation of a facility such as this, and the Reeve Union is directed by an elected student board in association with a full-time staff. Together, they organize and coordinate a wide variety of cultural, social, and recreational activities held for students throughout the year. In addition to these programs, the union also provides a fully equipped photo lab and a ceramic studio for student and faculty use. The day-to-day -day operation of the union is financed both by fees and the income generated by the programs it provides. One of the most impressive additions to the Oshkosh picture is the Colt Physical Education and Sports Center. The first floor contains three entire gymnasiums, as well as the physical education and ROTC offices. Elsewhere in the complex are classrooms, a dance studio, men's and women's locker and shower rooms, training, laundry and receiving rooms, offices and conference areas. Athletics has played an important role in the life of the institution since its earliest days. The year the school opened, its first baseball team took the field, racking up an impressive record with two wins in three games played. Appearing in 1891 were women's basketball teams and men's in 1900. All athletic teams were given the name Titans in 1938 when Professor James Breeze wrote the song Hail Titans. This was 17 years after the first homecoming. In 1955, Albee Gym was completed and dedicated to the first president. It replaced the old gym, which was built in 1909. As enrollment continued to increase, however, it became obvious that an expanded facility was necessary. And what resulted was the call Physical Education and Sports Center. The center is the home of the Physical Education and Health Education Department, which offers courses in virtually every area of physical education, as well as first aid, nutrition, personal and community health, and health counseling. Undeniably, the growth of the university in the last hundred years has been impressive, but statistics are deceptive. They do not speak of the range of education available at Oshkosh. The key to that lies in the faculty. Any institution or organization undergoing a period of rapid expansion is subject to pressures, and these are often borne most directly by those in the front lines. In the case of a university, these are the faculty members, and it is largely due to their efforts that the transformation from small teacher's college to major university has, in the case of Oshkosh, been accomplished so smoothly. And speaking of the faculty, Chancellor Giles had this to say. 
As we have attempted to look to the future of this university and the kinds of responsibilities that a university must accept and recognizing that the heart of any university is the faculty, that no university, regardless of administration or financial support or any of the other factors, can rise above the level of the faculty. We think that we have been unusually fortunate in bringing together a faculty of uh, very promising uh, individuals who have a strong commitment to developing the kind of program that uh, we have just been talking about. This program that Chancellor Giles refers to is the direction that the university will take in the next hundred years. And the central concept to that program is variety. The university recognizes that the needs of its students are varied. And at the same time, the problems that these students will face after graduation will require a variety of skills if they are to be dealt with effectively. Solutions to the problems that society will face in the next hundred years will not be found in neatly organized academic areas. If the university is to successfully prepare students to play active and meaningful roles in society, it must provide them with a comprehensive base of knowledge and skills which crosses academic lines. The success or failure of this program lies with the faculty. In 1871, 314 students attended the Oshkosh Normal School. Today, the enrollment of the university is upwards of 11,500. Although the majority of the students come from Wisconsin, the student body also includes residents of 31 states and 25 foreign countries. The needs and abilities of these students, their goals and skills, are as varied as their middle names. And the university has attempted to design a system of higher learning which will accommodate this diversity. To assure every student an equal opportunity to complete his or her four years at Oshkosh, an extensive financial aid program has been established. In 1971 alone, the program assisted 2,700 students in meeting their financial obligations. This office is only one of many service departments which exist to assist students, both personally and professionally. Others include the placement office, the counseling center, the health and testing centers, and the reading and study center. Each year, thousands of students pass through these offices, receiving the kind of professional service that is expected of a major educational institution. The impact that the university has on the area is difficult to determine exactly although by any standards, it is significant. In the area of student involvement, four schools have programs which place students in hospitals, schools, and commercial institutions as part of their academic training. These are the schools of education, business, nursing, and medical technology. The College of Continuing Education must also be credited with significant input into the community as a result of its extension courses which last year had an enrollment of 3,000 in credit classes and another 15,000 in non-credit or cultural programs. These and other formal programs make the institution a valuable resource to the community and also take advantage of the resources which the community affords the university. The primary goal of the university, however, is serving the needs of the student. The foregoing auxiliary programs serve as means to this end. Students coming to Oshkosh have a wide variety of backgrounds and an equally wide variety of needs and interests. There is no average student, and the university recognizes this. It has been and will continue to be flexible to the needs and demands of the student body, recognizing that only through this flexibility will it be able to achieve its stated goal of educating each individual to the fullest extent of his or her ability. One hundred years ago, Oshkosh Normal School was founded and given a mission, supplying teachers to the expanded educational system of the state and of the nation. It fulfilled that mission, 
providing over 20,000 teachers in its first century. The mission has now been broadened. The University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh has accepted the challenge of providing a broad range of quality education tailored to the needs of its students, students of all ages and nationalities. To accomplish this, the university has had to radically expand its facilities and faculty, and most importantly, its philosophy. This has been done. The institution now stands poised on its second century, eagerly facing the challenges it will encounter, confident in its ability to succeed. It has come a long way in the last hundred years. It has evolved from a normal school of limited resources and goals to a major educational institution. This transformation has not been easy. It has taken the dedication, the foresight, and the plain hard work of countless faculty and administrators to bring it to where it is today. It has been set upon a course which it cannot reverse, a course which will take it through the next hundred years, a century for service.